Hey everyone, my name is Mecha, and you're watching Fire Emblem Pitfalls, the series where I try and take away misconceptions held by Fire Emblem fans. Before we begin, I want to make it clear once again that everyone enjoys Fire Emblem in their own way, and that's completely fine. I'm not here to tell anyone they're playing the game wrong, do whatever you like, but if you want to get a little better at it, perhaps because you want to tackle harder games or higher difficulties, then this is just for you. I'm also aiming to take away common inhibitions, things people worry about too much when playing these games. An example of such a thing is experience distribution. People worry about this a lot, and end up shooting themselves in the foot over it quite a bit. I'm not sure what to pin this on exactly, it could be any combination of the following factors. Number 1. A fear of getting stuck. If you're playing a game blindly, for all you know there's some kind of really powerful boss in the next chapter that you need to reach a certain stat benchmark for. Number 2. Simply wanting to raise a lot of powerful units. Training zeros to heroes is a very satisfying thing in many RPGs, and Fire Emblem does give some very positive feedback to players with the level up screen. Number 3. The idea that hard work automatically means big reward. This complements the previous point, there has to be a reason the developers put this underleveled unit this late in the game, right? She has to be really good, better train her up. Number 4. Really wanting to max out units. In the same way that players get a satisfaction out of leveling a Pokemon to level 100, it seems they like seeing a unit's level, and preferably their stats capped. Again, it's not helping here that the game gives positive feedback by making capped stats glow, as if it's a good thing that you cannot grow anymore. And number 5, not wanting to waste the XP. It's treated as a resource to be maximized. If you're not gaining as much EXP in a battle as you could, you're basically throwing it away. All these worries or wishes are completely understandable, and I'm not going to counter them one by one. However, there are a couple of things I want to point out here that I'd like you to keep in mind if you feel like you have to maximize the XP gain. Number 1. Most Fire Emblem games have been beaten in so-called 0% growth runs, where units are not gaining any stats upon leveling up. Dandan has beaten FE5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11 and 12 this way. Espinoza is working on FE13, Awakening. Several people have done Fates, mostly unrecorded. Marty the Demon Slayer has beaten FE4, Pella Emblem has done FE2 and FE3, and there's even an unfinished FE1 run out there by Master Knight DH. You might think they only managed to beat these games with 0% growth because they're so good at Fire Emblem and used a lot of advanced strategies, but do realize that they were also trying to get a low turn count. You don't have to beat Amazing to beat a game on 0% growth, and in fact trying that out is a great way to improve as a player. Long story short, these games are more than beatable even with 0% growth, so you can afford to miss a couple level ups or even have some bad ones. Number 2. Let's think about what EXP really is. A single kill usually gives you around 35 EXP, so you need about 3 kills for a level up. How much does a single level generally improve a unit? It's actually very common for units to barely improve through leveling up at all. The stats that make the most difference are strength and speed, and even those can be overkill. A unit that's already dealing massive damage doesn't get much out of plus 1 strength, and a unit that's already doubling everything under the sun doesn't really need plus 1 speed. Small amounts of HP, skill and resistance don't really change a whole lot either. For every example you can think of where they did, there's probably a whole lot of others that don't. And a level up doesn't guarantee you get a point in a stat, it just lets a unit roll the dice to try and get lucky with their growth rates. Usually growth rates are around 50%. So on average, we can say that a kill is about a third of a level up, and a level up has about a 50% chance to improve a stat, often by an insignificant amount. Doesn't look very important now, does it? Please note that my point here is not that leveling up doesn't help at all. Especially in large amounts, level ups can allow units to reach important stat benchmarks, and increase their combat performance. But you shouldn't lose sleep over not micromanaging it perfectly, especially not in a casual playthrough. Of course, we can't discuss EXP distribution without revisiting the subject of Jagans, or early game pre-promotes. I addressed this in the very first episode of Farmland Pitfalls, but since you can hardly hear my voice over my obnoxious laptop fan, I'll gladly get into it a little bit deeper. So in almost every Farmland game, you get an early game unit that's a lot stronger than your other units, oftentimes a paladin. They are pre-promoted, which means they start out in a promoted class instead of an unpromoted one. Oftentimes they get a lot less EXP per battle than their unpromoted comrades, and as a result they're often accused of EXP stealing, a term I hope you will not use unironically ever again after watching this video. Many people will tell you that using the Jagan early on is a waste, because there is no reward for doing so, at least in terms of EXP. 
Not only do they gain less EXP per battle than other units, they also win in one battle rather than multiple, resulting in even less EXP gained. Their growth rates tend to be worse, with some exceptions, and they seem to have little to gain unlike other units because their combat tends to be close to perfect. What's the point of training someone who's already invincible? This results in a bit of circular logic, where a lot of so-called experts recommend against using these units and actually rate them lower, calling them beginner's traps or XP thieves or whatever, even lower than unpromoted equivalents or even units in worse classes than Paladin. Now let me make this perfectly clear. I understand wanting to raise your unpromoted units, considering the points at the start of this video, and I don't recommend anyone tries to solo entire chapters with Marcus or anything on their first playthrough. But the idea of that a unit is somehow worse because they start out pre-promoted is absolute hogwash. And to prove that to you, I'm going to do an experiment with you to let you see them in a new light. Let's say I'm going through FE8 with a team of 6 units. Erika the Lord, Archer the Monk, Gilliam the Knight, Vanessa the Pegasus Knight, Joshua the Myrmidon, and one final unit. This final unit can either be Franz, the unpromoted cavalier, or Seth, the pre-promoted paladin. Seth starts out a lot stronger than Franz, but once Franz gets to say level 15 and then promotes the paladin himself, then his stats will be equal to Seth's at base. This is not exactly how it goes in vanilla FE8, but for the sake of the argument, bear with me. So now I'm going to try and find out whether the team is better off with Seth or Franz in there. Well, with my whole team at base, obviously the team with Seth is a lot stronger. After all, Seth's stats blow Franz's out of the water at this point. You might contest that this is unfair since Franz hasn't had any time to grow yet, but a lot of people neglect that to properly see how useful a unit is, you shouldn't only rate their final results, but their performance throughout the entire game, which includes the very start. Until Franz catches up to Seth, Team Seth will be superior in every way. Only when Franz hits level 15 and gets his Knight Crest will he be equal to Seth, and this is assuming Seth hasn't gotten any level ups himself to widen the gap a little more. And contrary to what you might think, Seth isn't stealing any XP from the other units in this setup. As long as he doesn't take more kills than Franz would have taken in his place, Vanessa and Franz are getting just as much as they would otherwise. Take the theoretical pie of EXP that you're dividing equally across your units and give one sixth to every unit. It doesn't make a difference to your other units whether the last piece goes to Seth or Franz. The cool thing about Seth is that he doesn't even need to take the piece of the EXP pie for himself. He's so good at base level that he can afford to maybe only take half of that piece and give the other half to someone who needs it more. This is an extra option that the army with Seth has that the one with Franz does not have since Franz needs to hit his whole piece of the pie in order to get to promotion as soon as possible. And while you don't have to actively look for opportunities to kill things with Seth, you don't have to leave his amazing stats and class unused. He can be used to rescue drop people with his 8 movement or function as an emergency delete button when things go badly. What's more, Seth as a pre-promote does not need to use a Knight Crest, while Franz does. So while Team Seth can give the first Knight Crest to Gilliam instead, Team Friends has two people who really want that Nightcrest, but only one who can get it. Or if there's no one who needs Nightcrest, it can be sold for 5000 gold. The only thing Seth's low XP gain affects negatively is his own speed of improvement, but that doesn't change the fact that he's far ahead of the pack to begin with. The fact that he grows slowly is already shown by the fact that he's gained less level ups when given an equal number of kills. But I will admit, at some point Franz will have caught up to Seth and they will be equal. Now, real FE8 Seth has better growth than Franz, so he would still be winning at this point, but for the sake of the argument, let's assume they're more like FE7 Marcus and Kent, and that the unpromoted Cavalier has the better growth rates between the two. Now, we're probably in the middle to late stages of the game. If you've played a lot of Fire Emblem, you'll know that the difficulty is usually front-loaded. Early on, the enemies are closest in strength to most of the player characters, so the difference in stats between a pre-promote and an unpromoted player unit can make a big impact. But later on, enemies have not grown nearly as much as player units, oftentimes they haven't even promoted. The player has also gotten his hands on more powerful weapons such as Killer, Silver, Slayer or even Legendary weapons. So even if, at this point, the rookie has surpassed the veteran, the tiny statistical edge they'll have built up will amount to basically nothing and the Jacob will remain useful. This is compounded by the fact that pre-promotes usually have better weapon ranks than unpromoted units all around. In FE7, for example, it takes a while before Kent can even use the Silver Lance, while Marcus can use it at base, and Kent's Sword and Axe rank will never be as good as Marcus's. So far, what I've said mostly applies to the Jagans that are statistically strong throughout the game, FE7 Marcus, FE8 Seth, and FE9 Titania. These are oftentimes referred to as Oifis. 
A little bit of an odd term, since the unit they're named after, Oifi, is nearly as dominant as they are. Don't get me wrong, FE4, Oifi is a good unit, but not because his growths are super good. Just like the other Paladins, it's actually his stellar base stats, class, and weapon versatility that allow him to keep up with the likes of Selef and Eris. Tangent about Oifi's aside, you also shouldn't neglect to use the early promotes that don't hold up forever, even if you expect to drop them at some point. Remember what I said at the beginning? You can afford to miss every level up in the game and you can still beat it, so there is no shame in quote unquote wasting some EXP just to make your life easier for the early game, which is usually the hardest part of any Farmland game. In a way, I think it's actually more wasteful to not use a Jagan when they're at the strongest. They actually have a concrete statistical advantage that you're not really making use of if you're just using them to stand there or meet shield. You're never going to have this much of an advantage over your enemies ever again throughout the entire game. Like I said in Pitfalls 1, consider them packages with 1900 EXP and a free promotion item, not the EXP vacuums. While I'm on the subject of trying not to waste the EXP, people seem to be awfully worried about their main lords hitting level 20. I agree that it sucks that they often don't promote until late in the game, but if there's no one else around to take a kill, it really doesn't hurt you to just let them do it. In the same vein, if your lord didn't make it to level 20 before the promotion event, that's okay too. In a nutshell, you're going to be fine. You don't have to micromanage every drop of experience, just try to enjoy the game. I recommend anyone to try and play a relatively easy Fire Emblem while letting pre do whatever they want. Uh, try and see if you can beat the game without really raising anyone, or try doing that 0% growth run. I promise it will be fun, and probably easier than whatever you were doing before. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.